All right, here we go, guys. Welcome to another episode of All Access, the Photography Podcast. Today, episode 11 is a very special podcast, just like last week. Last week, we had Megan Smith Law, criminal lawyer who helped me get out of a jam a couple of years ago. Well, today, we're going to the other side of that situation, and we're going to interview Louise, who was the homeowner who pressed charges against me for exploring her abandoned family home. You guys are gonna love this episode because just like the last one, there's so much to learn. There's so many different elements to these stories, guys. There's our side, there's the human element of the property owner. This is a good episode, guys. You're gonna wanna stay for the whole thing. I've been looking forward to this one. So let's go, guys. Let's quit talking. Let's get right to it with myself, my friend Louise, who tried to press charges against me. Let's find out how this whole thing played out. Uh, Louise, thank you for joining the podcast. Uh, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your property, maybe the history, and if you don't mind, what led to it becoming abandoned? Okay, all right. So it was uh, uh, my family property. Um, I grew up there, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, my dad passed away in 2010. My mom didn't have a driver's license and she just wasn't, you know, she wasn't the fix it type. My dad looked after everything. So she wasn't able to live there anymore. So, um, so that was the first reason that it became, you know, a quote unquote abandoned. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, and we spent, so that was 2010. My mom passed away in 2016, but she had, you know, some health issues in, you know, fortunately she still had a few good years after my dad passed away. And she, she actually lived in a really nice retirement residence for, you know, for a few years, but, you know, she had health problems, dementia, basically in her last, you know, few years. And she passed in 2016. So, you know, there were six years where our focus was on her or my focus was on, you know, was on her. And I mean, even during that time, like we, I was at the property reasonably frequently, um, you know, cleaning it up. Um, the house, because it was kind of secure, was actually my last priority because people were going into the outbuildings and, and taking stuff, which wasn't secured at all. So I was, you know, first focused on getting those kind of, you know, cleaned up and safe as well. Like you helped me pull down the one garage that was like completely like unsafe. And that was actually the third building that I, that I actually took down. Wow. So, you know, not to go get too long winded about it, but I mean, there was still, you know, even while my mom was still alive, there was still kind of a lot, you know, happening you know, before we even got to sort of looking after the house. So that's why the house was, you know, vacant. And um, by 2016, though, when my mom passed, then I started, you know, spending time uh, cleaning up the house. But the intention was always to uh, eventually take down the house, which I'm actually still in the process of doing. Wow. But yeah, clearing out all their stuff, you know, took a, a long time. Right. Great. Okay. So, so it's, it's a pretty typical story that from what I hear uh, with these types of places that there's always, you know, a sad family situation involved. So, um, so how, how often do you find that people try entering the home? Does it happen all the time? So interestingly enough, in the first few years, it never happened at all. And so one thing is I was still maintaining, you know, cutting the grass and that type of thing. But then I wasn't getting anything else done. Like I wasn't making any progress because I live 45 minutes away. So I was not making any progress on getting, you know, any of the stuff cleaned up. So at some point I just, you know, stopped, you know, cutting the grass and stuff like that so that I could actually spend my time on actually, you know, when I was there, like I said, I was there typically, especially after my mom passed. I was there literally almost like once a week. So every Saturday I was there for, you know, for hours, um, put, put lots of mileage on my Fitbit, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it me in good shape. Um, so, um, sorry, I lost track of the question. Yeah. So how often was, did it, was oh, it happening? Okay. So, so yeah, what I was saying is for the first 
couple of years, because I was maintaining the look of the property, it didn't look abandoned, but I gave that up so that I could actually focus on, you know, clearing stuff out. Once that happened, then people started uh, breaking in. And I would say even in the first two years, probably people were kind of breaking into the, getting into the outside, you know, uh, out buildings because they weren't, you know, they weren't locked and stuff like that. Um, but the house break-ins were a lot easier because people usually broke stuff to get in because I mean, I always, I always kept it locked. So, I mean, I always knew if somebody came in because they'd either break a window to get in or, you know, kick in the door or whatever. So I always knew that I knew when they were getting into the outbuildings because, you know, you'd see a few things missing, but it really didn't start happening till a couple of years. And then I think it was probably at least once, you know, every six months, maybe every three or four months for, you know, for several years, but now it's not happening at all because basically there's not much left in there. I'm focusing on, uh, you know, basically I've been taking drywall off and stuff like that for, and, you know, basically taking it down to the studs and, yeah. you know, even pulling up the taking down ceilings and stuff. I've been doing that for like a couple of years. So, you know, the words out that there's not really anything interesting left there, you know, so, um, it hasn't happened much for about two years. So let's say by 2022 or 2021, really, um, I've had like, you know, somebody broke in about a year ago and I, I usually take my equipment with me, like my crowbars and and my own tools, but I left one there and somebody took the crowbar and some garbage bags, like the half a thing of, of, of garbage bags. It's like, you know, oh, what are you gonna do with that? Really, yeah. there just wasn't, you know, the, like there isn't, you know, much left these days. But for a while, somebody was in. Now, most of them were thieves, but I generally recognized. Um, actually, you were probably the first urban explorer, and I knew it because. I could tell nothing was missing. I mean, I generally know when things are missing. I knew things were moved around. Like I knew you'd taken the lid off the typewriter, for example. There were other things that I knew that were, you know, that were out of place because I I generally had a fairly, you know, even though there was a lot of stuff there, I had a fairly good idea of where things were. and, And I mean, people would open cupboards and leave them open. I always kept them close. So, I mean, I always knew when people were there, but you didn't, you didn't take anything. Oh, actually, sorry. There was another urban explorer before before you, but that particular party, I wouldn't call that person a true urban explorer because they took things. And I know that generally most of you guys don't. Yeah. Um, so I had at least that I know of three urban explorers and, um, you're the only one that, um, didn't sort of damage anything like, uh, And you closed the door when you left, like, and I mean, that's almost everybody that even people that break in, they, they, they just leave everything wide open. They, I know that they've been there because they leave the doors wide open. They leave the cupboard, everything, you know, Yeah. close the front door. Um, but like the other urban explorer, he broke in the back door and just left it like it was. So, I mean, you know, so to me, that's not respectful. I mean, I, I, I do understand the curiosity of, of urban explorers, yeah. but I mean, you know, there definitely, there has to be, res- you know, there has to be respect. Yeah. Um, but you know, like I used to go to like ghost towns and stuff like that, you know, yeah. like there's re- like up around Bannockburn, there's a really cool, um, you know, uh, like old roundhouse for the train station and stuff like yeah, that yeah. you know we took pictures and stuff like that and also by down by saint anne's it's an old there was an old cement plant and you can still see the kiln and, and stuff mm-hmm. like kiln and stuff like that like that stuff's cool you know and so i have to admit we were probably on private property when we looked <laughs> yeah. at that but i mean it was all you know um it was open and stuff like that so i i understand the lure of it and i also see that there's degrees of you know trespassing that's fairly minor yeah to there's also you know breaking and entering but also um in your case what they called it was unlawfully being in a dwelling i believe is that's right was was the you know the specific (laughs) thing 
you know, um, but but it actually does come with, you know, with, with potential criminal charges and stuff totally. like that, like yeah. not just breaking and entering. But, yeah, the 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 thing that they actually charge you with was unlawfully being in a, in, in a dwelling. So, I mean, anybody that has this as a hobby, that is something that, you know, is something that, you know, can affect their livelihood and their their outcome. Like, yeah, the, the only reason I kind of, you know didn't take my revenge on you is I kind of, you came and helped me do stuff. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, but I mean, otherwise I, you know, would have definitely, you know, I, I would have, I wouldn't have dropped the charges if there weren't something. Um, I know you're saying that in it for me, but I mean, I needed the help to sort of, of course. You know, yeah. Yeah. At the time. So, yeah. So when we met, you told me that you had trail cam footage of other explorers stealing your furniture. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I had trail cam stuff of them entering and yeah. I even one of them was like urinating on the lawn. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't realize there were trail cams. Yeah. Um, but I only know that they took something because they were the only ones that were on my, on my trail cams. Um, and basically some, you know, like basically an antique piece of furniture disappeared. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, I mean, do I, it, it's probably what you would call circumstantial, but, but, you know, yeah. um, you know, pretty, pretty sure it was them. But what's crazy about that is that you handed that over to the police and nothing ever came of it. So, yeah, and I should have followed up more about it. Like they said, you know, oh, we'll talk to, I'm not going to say, I was about to say the gender of the person. So I, they, they will talk to the person and they even gave me the person's name, but I didn't think it was right to sort of, you know, go like staking the person out. Like I no, actually that's the police's a good job. idea yeah. where that person lives, but I figured this is the police's job to follow up on this and they dropped the ball. And, and yeah, so I was kind of peeved about that. Um, and Actually, how I found out about you, well, when I did have, I do have trail cam of, of you, although in your particular case, and I saw you parked your car up the road, yep. whereas most other people didn't do that. They like, so I had like plates of, of, uh, of the people that, so that's how the other ones that went in and, and stole stuff, I had their, their vehicle plates yeah. And also then that person's Facebook page, like the police went as far as say, okay, here's the person's Facebook page. And the person had taken a selfie of themselves, not in my house, but clearly another abandoned house. So, yeah. you know, um, so they, you know, they knew it was kind of the same person, mm -hmm. um, but they didn't get, I should have followed up sooner, but they, they never did get back to me. And so they basically dropped the ball on that. You know? Big time. Yeah, that's that's too bad. And, and it ended up being me. <laughs> but hey, we'll get well, to that in a minute. Um, yeah. what, so tell us a little bit, um, you know, so you're going to be we're, we're going to you're going to be heard by a bunch of urban explorers yeah. on this podcast. So tell us about the frustrations of owning. And I'm, I'm saying the word abandoned because that's just the word I use. I know it's not. But tell us about the frustrations of owning an abandoned house and, you know, some of the troubles that are caused by people like us like what's the is it just is it such a hassle to you okay so i think the biggest thing is um invasion of privacy um like so and, and not so much that if somebody was just an urban explorer that didn't post it on social media so like i said there's degrees like i said somebody peeking through the window and taking pictures Versus, you know, say being unlawfully in a dwelling, like there's, there's different degrees there to me. So somebody that just goes from the outside and takes pictures is sort of, to me, that's less harmful than say, or even if somebody walks in somewhere, but it's open and they take pictures, that's less harmful actually breaking in when, you know, when there's locks, but also like, for now, I just actually, I, I saved your video, by the way, even though you took it down, I saved it so I, can, I have it in, you know, in perpetuity perpetuity so to Good, speak yeah but for example one of the first things in your video that we saw is that there were two ladders and a 
dolly, a hand truck that were chained to the stairs. That should have immediately said somebody cares and somebody's trying to protect, you know, this place. So, um, and yet people still in the comments of the Facebook post said people just abandoned it. If it was abandoned, why were the ladders locked, right. in, you know, in, in the front hallway? Yep. Um, but also it was like clearly even that there were totes around and things were in groupings. It was clear it was not abandoned, that somebody was, there was cleanup in progress. And I actually see that. So I actually have jumped on or become a member of some of the, you know, urban explorer sites on, on Facebook. Yeah. And I see comments all the time that, Oh, somebody just left that. And I mean, even to me on some of them, it's clear that somebody's been there recently. Right. Like there was one place where there were scaffold, there was scaffolding still there. And someone said, Oh, it looked like somebody tried to fix it at one point, but gave up. And it's like the scaffolding would not be there very long if they had not been there recently, because it would have been stolen. You know, right. So because right. it was like in, in sort of an open ish area. So, you know, a lot of people that are on social media that that are sort of fans of urban exploration, sometimes they're just not that observant. They think, oh, somebody's abandoned it. There was one case where you could tell people were living there. There was a hummingbird feeder, but the back of the porch was falling down. And people were saying people were talking about interventions like oh, we better make sure these people in here are okay and call the police because, you know, the porch looks like they're falling down. And it's like you could tell the porch was just being used for it's the back entrance. There must be yeah. another entrance. But people are totally, I, I think, often not very observant about whether something is really abandoned or if it's just, you know, somebody's kind of working on it or if it's just kind of junky. <laughs> Good. So, so what I'll do is for the listeners, I'll go back and I'll sort of, outline what happened here. It was uh, the fall of 2019 and I was on a road trip by myself for a weekend. And I don't remember who, but somebody had told me about your property as well as one up the street. And so I pulled in, uh, I pulled my car up into your driveway and I parked my car. I walked around, looked around and said, yeah, I can get in without having to break anything. So I got back in my car, backed out of the driveway, parked up the street, started filming and I walked up your driveway entered, did my explore, take my pictures, and left. And that was it. However, many weeks later, I put it online, and it was just out there and sort of forgot about it. One of the things that I did do wrong, though, is that somebody asked where it was. Yeah, that's and exactly I said, how we found it. Yeah, I said the name of the town, and yep. that's where my mistake was. <laughs> so then I understand that you had seen someone else. You or your sister, actually, or a friend. Yep, yep, yep. Saw somebody yeah. else's photos online of your house, and then you went on a a mad hunt to find more. Yes, that's exactly what happened. And yeah. of course, I'm typing in things like Warkworth, and yet yours, yet yours, yours came right up. <laughs> yeah, my stupid mistake, and that's the, something that I would I never do. I never reveal. The location, but I thought the name Workworth was funny, <laughs> a funny naming, a funny sounding city. And I had never heard of that city or that town before. Stupid thing to do as an urban explorer and stupid thing to do legally as well, as we have found out. So anyways, um, fast forward to the summer of 2020, almost a year later, I received uh, a summons from the Ontario Provincial Police that I'm being charged. It didn't say what I was being charged with. It didn't say what location. It just said around what time of year. So I'm like, I went to this many places. It can be any one of these like five places. I had no idea. So I looked into doing this, going through this by myself. I hired a lawyer and I got the discovery and I got the pictures of your house. I was like, that's the house? And then I'm thinking to myself, I've done some stupid things. I've gone into prisons, power plants, hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, very questionable places where I should have gotten in trouble. And I'm thinking, I'm getting in trouble for this house. <laughs> so, so I talked to the lawyer and she said, yes, okay, so you've been charged with entering uh, a, a dwelling house. And I said, right, but what's a dwelling house? Nobody lives there. And she said, that's the gray area that, you know, it's, it typically, yes, it is a house, 
but nobody lives there, but somebody still owns it and maintains it. So it's a dwelling house. So we went back and forth and I'm like, well, what am I looking at here? And the very first thing I suggested was, you know, why don't you ask if, oh, oh, and there was also, I broke the lock, which I didn't do. And I said, and you were asking for money back for the lock that was broken. I said to the lawyer, I'll pay for the lock, but I didn't break it, but I will pay for it. Um, and then I said, su I suggested uh, a community service idea where I come up there every Saturday for however many Saturdays we agree on and spend a few hours with you cleaning the outside, maybe cutting the grass. And I was very pleasantly surprised that it, that, that was well received by yourself and by the lawyer. Um, so before we continue, when you put up the, put the information through to the police, what was your hope or expectation for an outcome? At that point, okay, so because I mean, no, I didn't know that anything was going to be, you know, offered. Yeah. I was just mad, yeah. um, mad at, and I mean, you took the brunt of everybody that had ever broken in for any reason. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and I mean, basically, I guess you could, in a certain way, say revenge. Yeah. That, you know, um, that, that I was mad at, uh, anybody that had broken in for any reason. I mean, it's still, you know, my parents life yeah. that was being examined under a microscope and whether somebody's there to, you know, to steal things as some people did or to, um, again, I'm, I would be less upset if somebody were just, I'm exploring this for my own, I, you know, that it's interesting. Once it's posted online, your entire following passes judgment right. on the way that people live, the way my parents lived. And even under the misunderstanding that, you know, first of all, I didn't abandon, I was there every freaking week doing right. something, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, that, that I, I was mad about, like I said, the invasion of privacy, probably the biggest thing, uh, but also people saying, oh, they're hoarders or, you know, just just all kinds of passing judgment on various things. Um, and uh, why did they leave so much behind? And it's like, because we're still working on it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the invasion of privacy was by far the thing that upset me, you know, the most. Yeah. But I didn't like people taking my stuff either, you know. Of course. And, yeah. Mean, some valuable things. I mean, not that, you know, obviously, you know, I took, you know, I prioritized higher value things at the beginning. But I mean, I, you know, there's lots of things that, you know, were fairly, you know, recent, reasonable value, but there are things that are not easy to fence. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, um, I had a cast iron lathe. Nobody's going to steal a cast iron lathe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I got some decent money for it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, anything that's antique, but that's not highly, you know, collectible or desirable you know it's uh um there's still stuff sitting around that's parts of buildings that you know yeah. i just haven't even dealt with yet you know from yeah. things that we took down in in that one uh, building that we took down i still have to collect those up and i'll sell you know sell them but you know yeah. just things it just takes a while to get to things right okay so so you and your lawyer agreed to my suggestion so i believe it was five or six saturdays in a row yeah, uh, almost in a row yeah. Yeah. And I came and I spent about three hours each day. Uh, we cleaned up the inside of the property. We took down the tin roof. We tore down the front porch. We brought down the barn. Uh, so I would I would say ultimately you were satisfied with this as yeah. a resolution. Actually, it was uh, it was about six hours over. F it was supposed to originally it was supposed to be 35 hours community service. Ended yeah. up being about 30 because I let you off for good behavior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, you could have been um, uh, you did a good job. And, and I mean, you could have been um, sullen about it, like just going through the motions and you didn't. Yeah. So I, I, I appreciated that. And mm -hmm. you're younger and stronger than me. So provided <laughs> some uh, much needed muscle at, at, at the time. Mm -hmm. But again, not everybody would have done that, you know, right. it was very rewarding work. And I will say from my side, we did a lot of talking when we were working and I learned so much 
about the other side of the of the equation here of, of the mm-hmm. property owner. Now, I will admit it hasn't really changed much <laughs> in what no, I do. I, mean, I, 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 I accept that, you know. Yeah, like, but it did give me a real different respect for the homeowner and what you guys go through. Uh, so you've already answered my next question, which was, have you had many other problems since that summer? And I will say I've told so many people, Stay away from that house. <laughs> I, I, I'm fairly certain I haven't had another urban explorer, but there were, you know, like I said, a few issues since then. But I mean, um, I just got to the, you know, it was probably within a year of that that I'd kind of, I would even say that fall I'd started, I started that actually winter, I started taking down drywall and stuff like that and really sort of. Um, you know, less and less valuables, you know, there and, and even the sort of the, the, the criminal network, shall we say, seems to have gotten the word out that there's just, you know, it's not worth your time, you know. Type right. Thing. Yeah. So what's the status now and where what's your ultimate plan for the property? So, OK, so, I mean, it's a hundred and seventy five year old house built with um what they call a, um, a post and beam construction, which means, you know, the, the, the basic, um, architecture of it, no nails. It's all like beams that are put together, mortise and tenon and stuff like that. And the actual architectural salvage of the place is, is, uh, you know, is worth something. And that's what I'm working on now. Um, if you think about in the countryside where you see all these barns and stuff like that, yeah. It really has the same architecture that once you take all the drywall and, and um, siding and stuff like that, it's it's very similar. So um, I basically have been working at, at that, sort of taking it apart from the inside um, so that we can get to the valuable architectural salvage. Like, um, so tongue and groove um, flooring everywhere. Every, every level has tongue and groove uh, pine um, there's lots of beams, hand hewn beams from, so there's a, there's beams in the basement that are one foot by one foot, uh, hand, hand hewn by ax. Wow. Um, they're very desirable for like, you know, people turn them into mantles, yeah. you know, furniture and stuff like that. But I mean, it was evident that the place, like the roof leaked, there were structural issues with it. So yeah. We'd, we'd had always decided, you know, um, that that it was going to come down. It was just one emptying the contents and then basically, you know, uh, taking it apart for the architectural salvage. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't have spent the time that I've spent on it to one, uh, preserve the things that we wanted to keep from the house that are family mementos. Yeah. And then just sorting through stuff and selling it my parents grew up in the depression and so they never threw anything out, but yeah. I just couldn't, you know, like, and I mean, I've still had lots of dumpsters, dumpsters there for like stuff that's, you know, that is completely garbage. And I mean, yeah. you help me with that, like mattresses and rugs and stuff like that, that are no good. But I mean, they had a lot of contents and a lot of it was just old by the fact that they kept it. So I sold a lot of vintage in it, you know, and antique. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, so I was focused on that first and then it's like, um, getting to the actual taking the, the place down. So it was always the intention to take the place down. And I didn't, so a lot of people wouldn't have spent, they would have just got a dumpster and put everything in the dumpster. Yeah. Um, and, and I understand why people do that. They don't have the time to, to devote to it. Um, right. But also a lot of people would just take a wrecking ball to actually taking it down too. And uh, part of it is I kind of enjoy taking the place apart, you know, seeing yeah. how it's constructed and, and I enjoy selling the contents online and stuff like that. There's always like some, you know, people repurpose stuff, you know, as well. It's always interesting to see how people repurpose things. Yeah, there were people coming by every time I was there to buy stuff that you would put online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. that was um, from the some of the other build. Yeah, like I think the porch, somebody bought all the tin. So it was yep. like rusty tin. I yep. never knew that people were interested in rusty tin, but yeah. you know, people like <laughs> barn boards, you know, rusty tin. It's mm-hmm. uh, so yeah, the, there was a lot of activity of people coming by to buy stuff, old doors and stuff like that. At yeah. that time, it's kind of, you know, it, it's kind of slowed down, you know, in terms of that people, those were some people in the neighborhood that knew about it. 
But I mean, I sell a lot of stuff like on on Facebook Marketplace and yeah. Kijiji and stuff. Did like uh, that. did I, I I tried to get you in touch with the Salvage Kings? Did that ever come to? The guy came out. Uh, the guy came out and and you know so he scouted he scouted yeah. and we talked and stuff like that. But I never got a call back. So I'm yeah. just thinking it just wasn't quite. One Enough. of the things he said is they're looking for a couple different things. One, the value of the salvage, and I mean, again, in terms of by that time, a lot of the actual stuff. Again, I'd move the more valuables out of there, but I showed them some cool stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, some military things that I'd found in the house and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, some old checks from the night, like 1920s and stuff like that of banks that no longer exist. Yeah. Um, but he says, you know, so one is the value of the salvage. One is if there's anything history, but also is there something weird like, you know, a ghost or something like that, or it's haunted or, you know, as oh, you know, somebody being murdered in the place. So there just wasn't, you know, enough of a story there to sort of, to, you know, to make it, uh, you know, interesting, but the guy did come down and, and uh, scout the place. So that interesting. was interesting. Wow. So the, the last question, it's not, not a question. It's an, op- it's an opportunity. Uh, again, since my podcast is geared to urban explorers, um, and you've probably already said this, but one last opportunity. Is there anything you would like us to know, or is there anything that you'd like to say to us uh, as an abandoned property owner? What do you want to tell urban explorers? I think, you know, respect, have some respect for the people that that live there. Like, you know, people have different stories on, on why it came to be abandoned. You know, sometimes people, you know, I was fortunate. My, um, my brothers and sisters didn't, you know, we didn't have this big legal fight or anything like that. It's pretty amicable, except that they didn't really help me that much. I had to sort of do a lot of it on my own, but, but I mean, I have, you know, I know other people that have very, um, you know, uh, when somebody passes away, uh, fights and stuff yeah. like that, like yeah. between siblings and, and, and stuff like that. So try to have some respect and understanding of, you know, of the people that, you know, that, um, they, that, that once lived there, you know, especially, like I said, urban explorers, you know, and maybe some of them might be, so maybe some people would be, um, less inclined to post things online, you know, um, I don't remember if it was you or the other guy, but somebody, people that I knew said, I know that house I played there as a child and, oh, it's too bad. Nobody lived there after the parents, you know, like, I don't want people sympathy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people feeling sorry for my family. You know, I mean, it's, uh, and I mean, I think I'm liking the journey of, having sort of gone through their stuff and taking down the house piece by piece. Cause it's yeah. pretty in- interesting from, from somebody who likes to see how things are put together. It's <laughs> that, that part's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just finding out what, you know, the, the, the phrase about some people's uh, trash and other person's treasure, it's being, yeah. kind of, you know, cool finding out what people think, you know, is um, I made some notes. I just want to see if there's anything else here that, that I thought was important, but no, I think, yeah, I, I think again, biggest thing for me was, was sort of, you know, invasion of privacy, I think. And yeah, good. That's good to know. This is, cat, is this castle, so to speak. Yes. This has been great. I hope this has been eye opening for uh, other people like me. And, uh, thanks so much for taking half an hour out of your day to join me. And, uh, again, I'm sorry. I invaded your privacy. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you guys liked that one. For this episode, I'm not going to read from Access All Areas because uh, I couldn't really find anything in here that would really apply to this episode, but I do want to wrap things up with some thoughts of my own. First of all, my own stupidity is what led me to have this situation in the first place. When I posted the location on my Facebook page, I commented the name of the town that it was in, and that's what sealed the deal for me. This woman, uh, Louise, was looking online, And she found my comment on my post of her family home. And that's what directed her to me, unfortunately. And that's my own fault. And, uh, you know, these days I do harp on people for, you know, tagging the name of the city in their, in their posts or dropping a name of, or too many hints. And, you know, I've been there and I've done it. And that's what happens guys. If you drop a name 
and a property owner uh, catches on that their stuff is online, they're going to find it. And you can get yourself into a, a lot of trouble. This situation could have ended much worse for me. Uh, thankfully and fortunately through my lawyer, Louise, Louise's lawyer, they were all uh, open to the idea of me just going and spending time with her and helping out, showing interest and be just be a generally be a good person. So let this be a lesson for us guys on what to do and what not to do. And maybe, maybe we should be paying more attention to the red flags that we see when we're exploring. If a house really, it looks abandoned, but somebody's doing some work on it. Maybe I should have left because she's right. She had the house pretty well sealed up, but there was an easy way in. And then when I got inside, there were some things laying around that did definitely tell me somebody comes here every once in a while. So I should have paid more attention. Uh, I should have not gone inside. And uh, I think I can do a little bit of a better job at learning my lesson from this experience. And hopefully you guys do too. So if you guys ever find yourselves in a pickle or in a situation similar to mine, get creative with your ideas and how you can help resolve it without having criminal charges on your record. And how can you help the property owner and, um, and make amends for what we've done. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Next week, we are interviewing my friend Rand Tropolis. Uh, she has been a friend of mine for a couple of years. A fantastic explorer, a great photographer. Uh, she's got so many great locations. And then the week after that, we're going to talk to Zenning with Zay. She's a great explorer herself. Explores all over Ontario as well as on the East Coast of Canada. So lots of great episodes to look forward to. Hope you guys have liked this one. I got more stuff in the can that I'm working on. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, please do leave me a review. Drop me some stars and help Apple Podcasts and the other podcast networks know you guys like this podcast. That's it, guys. Thanks for being here. See you next week. Peace.